FRQ shift by Tone Sturm and developed by GSDSP is a frequency shifter modulation plugin. An effects plugin which uses frequency shifting as basis for its extended modulation possibilities. To full on modulation effects madness. I'm Marlon and welcome to the White Noise Studio. I read the manuals so you don't have to. Speaking of manuals, in the manual, frequency shifting is explained like this. Frequency shifting is the process of shifting all components frequencies of a sound by an equal amount. If your input is harmonic, it will destroy the harmonic relationship resulting in a more unnatural sound. Non-harmonic, especially percussive sounds, are less sensible to extreme settings. Let's start from zero and build an effect. This way you can learn how the plugin is laid out and what does what. Frackshift features two shift engines. They can be linked together with this lock icon. The left engine will control the right engine. Here you can set the range of the frequency shift. From a range of 1 Hz to a range of 5000 Hz can be selected. With the plus and minus you zoom in on what you see. It's purely visual. If you choose the lower values you can already create pleasing sounding chorus, flanging and phasing effects. You can choose between Hz and BPM. When you select BPM, you can let the shifting happen synced to the tempo of the project from note based to modulation over multiple bars. The range selection in Hertz is then deactivated. With the frequency spread, you can set the frequency of the other engines to a multitude of the one you're changing. This works in both directions. Set it to low for sweet white phasey effects. By changing this to phase spread like this, you can still widen the stereo image. Only this keeps the frequency of both channels the same. Setting one channel to phase and the other one to frequency. Because why not? And it sounds like this. The reset knob can reset the phase of the engines when you're in Hertz mode. And you can fade between the channels with the cross fade dial. These four here are all feedback path effects. So every one of these will feed back into the engines. Clicking on one will show a number of controls. First up is the shifter. It feeds back into the engines. Below 20 Hz, it generates phasing effects. Left and right controls, phase flip, and a cross bleed regulator. Sounds really nice. Delay. It obviously puts the sound into a delay effect, which then gets fed back into the plugin. Time can be set in Hertz or BPM. And the offset sets the offset for the right channel like this. This can help to widen the stereo image or get more rhythmic type effects. The amount of feedback per channel can be set. They are linkable and have a flip face per channel. Here you can change the routing of the delay, which gives a different sound. The resonator effect is also cool. It shares some of the same controls as the delay, so I won't go in there. There's a crossfeed. With this you set how much of the channels feed into each other. It sounds like this.
The filter is a filter. There are several band types. A frequency dial and Q control. And you can set if the filter applies only on the feedback loop or also on the output of the entire wet signal. This one is a neat addition. Since feedback loops are unstable, these controls will help you from preventing that the feedback loop will blow up. To the left is not stabilized. To the right is fully stabilized. A kill switch is here and you can high and low pass the feedback loop if you want. Here are an input and output gain control, the dry-wet mix control, the plug-in can be switched into mid-side mode. That is very nice and opens up another palette of sounds. You can drive the plug-in into soft clipping and there's an aliasing on and off button. I found that to be useful. Sometimes the modulation sounds better with aliasing and sometimes better without. So it's great, you can switch it on or off here. Now you can already create great sounds like this. But if you press this here, it will literally open up a new world of control. It's the modulator section. In here you can assign modulator modules to modulate several settings of this plugin. With this big plus you add one of four modules. LFO, custom LFO, random and envelope follower. Let's start with LFO. This yellow button is the assign button. Press it and on the plugin you will see what can be assigned. Very clear and foolproof. You hover over a button or dial and you'll see these little arrows appearing. There you can set how the module will modulate that control. And when you tweak, you also see in the assignments panel what you just did and you can tweak there as well. This allows to change the behavior of the module to modulate around the setting or use it as a starting point. Very foolproof and clear. There is some nice GUI design here. And that's not all. If you press the edit button you can edit the LFO. The custom LFO allows you to create your own LFO shapes. And I noticed if you let it modulate low cut frequencies, you can easily create a fake sidechain compression sound. Set the dry wet to wet and you're good to go. The module random lets you assign different types of randomness with lots of tweakability again. And the fourth module is an envelope follower.
Let me switch to a different sound like this bass synth. There are a lot of controls. Let me play around with them a bit. If you want to use automation for this plugin, it works a little different than usual. You hover over a button and you select which host slot you want, and then you can write automation. I don't know if I like it or not, but this way you don't have to go through 500 parameters in automation. You can clear assignments with the right mouse button when you hover over a control, and you can delete modules, etc. There is a sound to this plugin, and I can describe it as quality. It sounds luxurious. Phase shifting is a really interesting technique to create modulation effects. This plugin, the FAQ shift, is created for modulation. But you can also use frequency shifting as a really, and I mean really, great tool to fatten up your drums. And shift the frequencies in a way to make drums big, fat and punchy. You must check out my video of the PSP Hutz Rider 2 on drums to see how that all works out. It's displayed on screen right now. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!